In this mini lecture, we'll talk about persuasive appeals. Now persuasive speaking is a remarkably difficult task. As the speaker, you must help your audience identify with and relate to your message. The Greek philosopher Aristotle divided the means of persuasion appeals or appeals into three categories, ethos, pathos, and logos. So let's individually take a look at those. We'll start with ethos. Ethos also means credibility or ethical appeal, and it means that you are convincing by the character of the author, or in this case, the speaker. Now we tend to believe people whom we respect. One of the central problems with persuasion is to project an impression to the reader or to the listener that you are someone worth listening to, someone we want to listen to, and an authority on the subject of the speech. You want to be someone who is likable and worthy of respect. We want to trust you. So how do you establish ethos? Well, first, you want to be well versed on your topic matter. You are supposed to be the expert. You want to engage the audience with an enthusiastic delivery style, maintaining eye contact, using vocal variety, good facial expressions. And you want to be sure that the information you use is highly credible. With persuasive speaking, we need to have good, solid information in order to be able to judge you as being a credible speaker. So, we know that we need to judge you as being credible. Your ethos needs to be high. Another type of appeal that you would be using is pathos. Now, pathos is often associated with an emotional appeal, and it's Greek for suffering or experience. Now, a better equivalent might be an appeal to the audience's sympathies and imagination. An appeal to pathos causes an audience not just to respond emotionally, but to identify with the speaker's or writer's point of view, to feel what that person is feeling. In this sense, pathos evokes a meaning implicit in the verb to suffer or to feel pain imaginatively. Now, that does sound kind of grim. And, you know, we're bombarded with messages that try to um, elicit an emotional response all the time. Think about the various commercials that you've seen on television, and you'll find in some of the content lessons and the activities throughout these units on persuasion, some messages and some commercials that have very strong emotional appeals. The example that I often use, uh, if you think of the Sarah McLaughlin song, Arms of an Angel, you probably instantly think of the SPCA ads, um, which are very difficult to watch. So as a speaker, how can you establish pathos? Well, one of the best ways to help your audience emotionally connect to a topic is through the use of a narrative or a story. Also, with establishing your credibility, it helps understand why did you choose this topic? Why do you feel passionately about this topic? You can find stories and examples on various locations. When we talked about evaluating information and gathering information, blog sites certainly have their limitations. But let's say that you are doing a speech about immunizing your child and you've identified that there's a problem and your solution is to immunize. You could begin to establish pathos by telling a story, a story that you perhaps have personally experienced or even something that you found online. Now delivery is key to helping the audience connect to you, your topic, and your message. So again, you want to establish good eye contact and have good vocal variety. So we've reviewed ethos, which is credibility, pathos, which is usually associated with an emotional appeal, and the final type of appeal that we are going to look at is logos. Logos is equated with logic. It means persuading by the use of reasoning. Now you may have uh, experienced in the past issues with inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning, and we're not going to get into all the specifics. But when we're looking at speaking and trying to use uh, logical appeals, we want to look at, is it a clear claim? Does the reasons, do the reasons sound 
like they would be reasonable? Do we have effective supporting evidence? And this is what's going to be key for a Calm 101 persuasive speech, is that we need to have good supporting evidence. And the impact of logic on an audience is sometimes called the arguments, of course, logical appeal. Can I establish through the use of evidence and claims that this problem exists and that my solution is a viable solution? So when we're looking at how to establish logos, how to make those good logical appeals, what can we do? Well, you want to use only highly credible information to support your argument. Now, although the topic is not permitted, if you were to be trying to deliver a persuasive speech about legalizing marijuana, using hightimes.com would not be considered a credible source of information. There would probably be a significant amount of bias in that source. You want to organize your speech in a way that easily guides the audience through your information. You're kind of connecting the dots for your audience. If your audience is not able to understand the problem or your proposed solution, you are not going to be able to say that you made a logical argument. And of course you want to speak with authority and conviction. Again, good eye contact, vocal variety, knowing your subject, knowing the information that you are going to present. So to, to deliver an effective persuasive speech, you must use all three appeals. And you need to determine the best way to balance this. We, of course, as an audience, need to think that you are a credible speaker, that you are a good character. We need to be able to connect with your topic on some level to understand why this is a problem. And we need to be able to have logical arguments and good evidence that is credible and as unbiased as possible so that we understand the reasoning for making your argument. If you think about ethos, pathos, and logos, and then develop a highly organized speech, you will probably deliver an effective persuasive message.